Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English. Now, writing a letter, writing a letter, writing a letter. If you are doing your exam in November, you are very, very lucky because, guys, the, back, the, the exam boards, just the way they announced for the June GCSE, have also announced what is coming up for the November GCSE. So in June, for English language, paper two, question five, the exam board said that you will be writing an article. So everyone was revising articles, everyone was making content around articles. Tick, done, that exam is finished. Now, the November reset guys is about three weeks away. And they have also announced what is coming up in this paper two, question five. And they have told us that for those of you doing the reset, you will be writing a letter for paper two, question five, which is 50% of the exam. So your job is that between now and then, you must become an expert on writing a letter. Now you guys are lucky because for those of us who are doing the exam in June, 2023, we won't have a clue what's going to come up, but we can make some educated predictions closer to the time. Now guys, in this video, I am going to make it the one-stop shop for writing a letter. I'm not gonna break it down to five different videos just so I can get views. I'm gonna put everything, guys, in one video. We're gonna go over, first, the mark scheme and everything you need to know about the bones of question five. How much time, how many sides, how many paragraphs, what you marked upon, everything. Then to prove this, then we're gonna go over some grade nine answers that were published by the exam boards. Not by me, they were published by the exam board and they were graded by the exam board. Then we're gonna go over some common questions that everyone asks about letters. Do you have to put the address over there and the other address over there? Do you need your sincerely and yours faithfully? Or is that stuff just for when you're in year seven? Then guys, I'm gonna show you guys how you plan an entire question five for writing a letter. And then we will hopefully write out a bit of a letter. And by the end of this video, if you're there until the very end, you will hopefully guys have every single thing that you need to write a letter. So guys, let's not waste time. Let's jump to the board and let's begin with the bones of paper two, question five. And that is writing a letter. So oh guys, when we are looking at paper two, question five, we know that this year we are writing a letter. However, that's the only thing that's changed. One thing that you must understand that the mark scheme is exactly the same. The mark scheme, whether you're writing a letter, a speech, an article, a blog, or even if we're doing paper one, question five, the mark scheme remains exactly the same. That is why we shouldn't get too focused on this actual thing, because no matter what they give us, what they want remains the same. So guys, paper two, question five, you are writing a letter. And for this question, we are looking to spend 45 minutes and the entire question is worth 40 marks in total. Now, because it is 40 marks guys and it's 45 minutes, this is worth 50% of paper two. So guys, this is worth 50% of the entire paper, this one question. So therefore guys, we know that it is a very important question. Now, when it comes to what is the mark scheme, what do you have to do in your letter to get a high grade? We're talking grade eight or grade nine. There's five things that you have to do. Forget the other stuff. The other stuff you will do by yourself automatically without even thinking about it. There are five things that I would like you to focus on. Now, the first bullet point, guys, right, in the, in the mark scheme, it talks about whether your writing is compelling. Guys, the first bullet point in the mark scheme, it talks about whether your writing is compelling. Now, compelling means interesting. Guys, compelling means interesting. Now, interest is a very subjective topic. Now, what does that mean? That means that what I find interesting, you may find boring. And what you may find interesting, I might find boring. So how can I write an interesting letter? Guys, the exam board, it tells us 
how we must write an interesting letter. There are four steps. Guys, there are four steps that we must do in our exam to produce an interesting letter. The first thing, guys, is nothing new. The first thing you must do is in your letter, you must use a range of language devices. Guys, in your letter, you must use a range of language devices. That is why it is so important to learn the foundations of English because language devices come up in that area. The second thing, guys, that we must do for question five, paper two, is we must use a range of punctuation. Guys, the second thing that we must do is that we must use a range of punctuation. Now, don't worry if you don't know this stuff. I will give it to you in this video. I will tell you what language devices to use. I will tell you what punctuation to use. Now, guys, the third thing, have we got space at the bottom? Let's go ahead. Guys, the third thing that you must use is you must use a range. Now, this is the most important one. Guys, you must use a range of ambitious vocabulary. Now, all that means is that in your exam, please use big words. Don't say today was a bad day. Say today was a heinous day. Don't say I feel very, very sad. Say I feel morose. But I will give you those words as well. But please make a conscious effort to use a range of ambitious vocabulary. And number four, guys, which is the last thing that you must do, is that we must focus on elements of structure. One, two, three, and four. Guys, these are the four things that you have to do in your exam because these four things will make it compelling. And that is the part of the mark scheme that I would like you to focus on. That's it. This is the most important part of the mark scheme. In every single paragraph you do, you must have language devices, you must have punctuation, you must have vocabulary, and you must have elements of structure. Each paragraph, repeat, 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 repeat. Now, there are other things that you're marked upon, but respectfully, guys, those things you should know, and those things, guys, are a given when it comes to English. For example, in the mark scheme, it talks about using correct spelling. Guys, all of you should know that in an English exam, you should try your best to spell appropriately and correctly. Now, what do I say? If you're in your exam, and you come across a word and you're not sure how to spell it, leave that word and pick a different word. The exam is not the right time to be a hero. Now, what else are you marked upon? You're also marked upon if you've answered the question. So if the question says, write a letter complaining about, I don't know, complaining, complaining about lockdown, keep your answer focused on the topic at hand. And finally, guys, please bear the audience in mind. If it says write a letter to teenagers, the examples you use in your letter link them to a teenage audience. Okay, that stuff, guys, is a given. Now let's go over the overall structure of our writing. So we begin, guys, we begin with an intro. And the intro, we are going to be spending two and a half minutes on when it comes to our writing time. So guys, we begin with the intro and we spend two and a half minutes on this intro. Now, in an ideal world, guys, in an ideal world, let's say we do, I'll call it here, guys, I'll call it here. Let's say we have main paragraph, one, two, three, and four. Guys, let's say we have main paragraph, one, two, three, and four. Meaning, these are our four arguments. So, for example, if you're complaining about lockdown, argument one, argument two, argument three, and argument four. Try to do four, if not three, should be okay. Guys, for these four paragraphs, what the plan is, is that you are looking to spend 10 minutes per paragraph. Guys, we are looking to spend 10 minutes per paragraph. And then we are ending our letter with a conclusion, which should take us two and a half minutes. Now, if you tally all that up, guys, that takes us to 45 minutes. And that is how much time you are given in an exam. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, sir, when do I plan? When do I put my ideas down? 
Now, there's two points I would like you to consider. If you're following my videos, what is my advice? The only part of your exam that you're going to plan is your content. Guys, the only part of your exam that you are going to plan is your content. Because the language, so for example, the language devices, the punctuation, the vocabulary, the structure, that part, by the end of this video, you will know how we will be learning it off by heart. The only thing you're going to change is the top part, which is the content. But the language, all this stuff, the important stuff, remains the same. So, that's the first thing. Therefore, we're not going to be having a lot of time needed to plan. Number two, remember guys, you get a separate 15 minutes to plan question one, two, three, four, five. So we take our planning time from that. But the overall bones, guys, of the question are as follows. 45 minutes, 40 marks. This is the structure. Intro, two and a half minutes. Three to four main paragraphs. Obviously, guys, if you're doing three paragraphs, then you divide 40, uh, 40 by three. And you have a conclusion, guys, which is two and a half minutes. Now, before I go over what language devices to use, what punctuation to use, what vocabulary to use, what structure to use, before I go over how to plan an entire essay, before I go over all the details of the essay itself, I want to step back for a second. And now, guys, we're going to go over at least one grade nine answer published by the exam boards because I want to prove to you how this is what you need to produce a top quality letter. So, guys, the question five that we will be looking at is as follows. It is the people who have extraordinary skill, courage and determination who deserve to be famous, not those who have good looks or lots of money or behave badly. Write a letter to the editor of a newspaper in which you argue your point of view in response to this statement. So that is the question, guys. And that was the question for the GCSE exam a couple of years ago. Now, let's jump straight in and look at a grade nine answer. Here is the grade nine answer. Now, as you can see, guys, when we look at the marks that this answer got, it got 22 plus 15, meaning it got 37 out of 40, which is teetering on the edge. It's a solid grade eight dipping into a grade nine. Um, if it was this year's grade boundaries, then this would definitely be a grade nine answer. Now, guys, this answer, I repeat, was marked by the exam board. Now, just to prove to you guys, guys, just to prove to you guys that the mark scheme that I went over is what matters, have a look at what mark scheme they are using. They are marking you on your vocabulary. They are marking you on your language devices. They are marking you on your structure. They are marking you on your sentences, which comes into structure. And they are marking you on your use of punctuation. Now, I said to you guys at the beginning, I am not... Now, guys, these two, that's relevant because that's the comments that they made about the work. But when it comes to actual what you're marked upon, these five things are what you should be really focusing on. This one, this one, and this one, these are things that I hope you all will do no matter what happens. For example, every single one of us should be looking to spell correctly. Every single one of us, guys, these two, what do these two mean? These two literally mean, please make sure you answer the question. If the question says, write a letter of complaint, please make sure you are complaining in your letter. So, guys, you're marked upon these five things. And that's exactly what I went over at the beginning. And this is the proof, guys. This is directly from the exam boards. Now, here is our grade. Let me turn that off, guys. Guys, here is our grade nine answer here is the answer that got 37 out of 40 now first things first guys first things first i did this last year with the speech and i'm doing it again guys if anybody says to you that as a gcse student guys we're not in year seven when you're in year seven right when i when i would teach a class in year seven or eight what would we do? Guys, please put a nice address over there and please put a nice address over there and please make it look like a lovely letter. Guys, we haven't got time for that. This is a GCSE exam. You are marked on your language. You're not marked on your ability to actually write a letter. We're not actually writing a letter that you're gonna post to the post office. 
you're submitting a GCSE exam. And for the GCSE exam, you're marked on these five things. Vocab, devices, structure, sentence, unturned structure, and your punctuation. You are not marked on how lovely you can come up with a nice creative address. So please do not waste your time in your exam using an address. You want to go straight in there. You want to go straight into your answer. And you either start with, dear sir, madam, or dear, and then you give the name. Now, hear me out very carefully. In the question five, if it says, write a letter to John, who is, I don't know, the head teacher of your school, then you write at the top, dear John. If you're given a name, you use the name. However, if you're not given a name, if it says, write a letter to the local council, then you put, dear sir, madam. That's it. And then we begin our essay just the way I said at the beginning. Intro, four paragraphs, conclusion, done. Now, how do you end your letter? Three simple ways. You pick whichever one. It's not a big deal. Do not be sitting there for hours deciding. Either, guys, you do regards, you do yours sincerely, or you do yours faithfully. The safe bet is just write regards and put your name there. That's the safe bet. It's the easy one. Now, yours faithfully and yours sincerely only work if you know the difference. If you start your letter with dear sir or madam, meaning you don't know the name of the person you're writing to, then you end your letter with yours faithfully. However, if you know the name of the person, for example, dear John, then you end your letter with yours sincerely. But if you're in your exam, and you're thinking, what did that guy on YouTube say? Don't bother wasting your time. Just write regards and put your name there. Guys, that's it. Don't overcomplicate writing a letter. No address needed. You're simply going to put dear sir or madam or the name if they've given you the name in the question. Intro, four main paragraphs, conclusion, and you are finished. Now, let's read this question five letter that got a grade nine let me ask you a question semicolon why is it that those who are famous are never those who work hard so we started off guys with a rhetorical question and we started off with some punctuation tick remember guys the mark scheme tick and tick so we've got punctuation and we have got some language devices now the uh, let's move on guys this might seem paradoxical in nature. I love that. I love the word paradoxical. Um, that means strange. Uh, there we have our vocabulary. And indeed to many others. However, have you ever stopped to consider those who really work hard? The cleaners, the teachers, the examiners. I love that. We have another language device, which is rule of three. There are millions who work with that seize or pause, but are not recognized properly for their actions. This is wrong. That is a short sentence which comes under structure. So, like a robot, just like a robot. <coughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read the entire letter. Um, it's on the screen now, guys. You can take a screenshot if you want. But look at how this student is the opening of the letter the most amazing letter in the world? Is it a letter that I'm thinking, wow, this is, this, 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 this is groundbreaking stuff? No. But guys, they are doing what's required. This is an English language exam. In their first paragraph, they've ticked off the mark scheme. They've got language devices, they've got vocabulary, they've got punctuation, and they've got sentence forms in the form of a short sentence which also gives them the mark for structure. Done. As long as they can do that in each of their paragraphs, they will be ticking off the mark scheme, forcing the examiner to give them the high mark. Now, it's not as simple, guys. It's not as simple as just doing this. What matters more when you're trying to go for a grade eight or a grade nine is the quality of what you use. For example, a language device is a simile. A simile is a language device. However, if you wrote in your letter, the guy ran like a cheetah, that's a bit of a dead simile. Everyone uses that simile since year five. 
So always be conscious of the quality of the language you are using. But as a base point, I really want you guys to understand that we are not here writing a letter because this is not a real letter. We are here doing an English language GCSE exam and you are marked on one, two, three, four, five. So please make sure in your answer, you are doing one, two, three, four, five in every single paragraph. All right, guys, so I've been over the bones of the question, meaning how many paragraphs, how much time, and what is the mark scheme? I have now proven to you by this answer that I didn't mark, it's not my answer, but I've now proven to you how the mark scheme is super important because it will ensure you get a grade nine. This is 37 out of 40. Now, we're gonna bring and put everything together. I can't leave you guys hanging. I can't say to you guys, use vocabulary, but not give you the vocabulary. I can't say to you guys, use language devices, but not give you the language devices. Now guys, I'm gonna give you all of the devices, all of the punctuation, where is it? All of the uh, vocabulary and all of the structural elements that you're gonna use for your question five. Once we've been over those four, then I'm gonna plan an entire letter just so you can see how it needs okay, to be. So these are the four sections that we need to know for our exam. Punctuation, structure, language devices, and ambitious vocabulary. Now, when it comes to punctuation, guys, we need four. When it comes to structure, I should not leave that one for a second, guys. When it comes to vocabulary, we need eight. And when it comes to language devices, we need eight. So guys, punctuation, structure, ambitious vocabulary, and language devices. Now, the punctuation, guys, is four because we are using one per main paragraph. So guys, one per main paragraph. So in main paragraph one, you may use an exclamation mark. In main paragraph number two, you may use a semicolon. In paragraph number three, you may use a colon. And in paragraph four, you may use brackets. Now, that isn't to say you can't use anything else. You may use speech marks. You may use a uh, question mark. This isn't to say you can't use other pieces of punctuation, but as a minimum, we're gonna use one, two, three, four in each of our four main paragraphs. Then guys, we need to have a range of language devices. So we need eight guys. So we go for a simile, we'll go for hyperbole, we'll go for rhetorical question, which is very important when it comes to writing letters. Then we're going to include some facts in the form of statistics. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go for three more, guys. Then let's go for, let's go for, let's go for, let's go for sibilance. I'll explain what that is if you don't know. Let's go for personification. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's end it with oxymoron. So guys, these are the eight devices that we are aiming to use. I repeat, that doesn't mean you can't use others. However, as a minimum, we are going to use these eight, two per paragraph. So in paragraph one, you might use these two, paragraph two, these two, paragraph three, and paragraph, is that well? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, guys, I need one more for in this part here. Okay, guys, let's go over this now. What is a simile, guys? A simile is when you compare two nouns using like or as. Um, the boy was as strong as an elephant. I've compared the boy to an elephant using like or as. Then you have hyperbole. Hyperbole, guys, the answer is in the name. It's when you hype things up. This pen is the best pen in the entire world. That is a hyperbole. Then, guys, a rhetorical question. In writing, 99% of questions are rhetorical because they don't require answers. You, you, are, you are asking them to trigger thought, not to receive an answer. Facts and statistics, guys, is when you say stuff like 90% of people, one out of every five people. It's when you use facts and statistics. Just make sure they are realistic. Um, guys, the metaphor is when you compare two nouns without like or as. If I said, the boy is an elephant, he is so strong. I've now compared the boy to an elephant without using like or as. 
Trisibilance is alliteration, but with the S letter. If I said the snake slowly and silently slithered through the sand, that is sibilance. And then guys, you have personification. Personification is when you give a non-human human features. This pen is laying on my hand. And oxymoron guys is when you have two opposing, two opposite words side by side. Normally, all you do is you think of an adjective and then you think of the opposite noun. For example, if my adjective was slow or fast, if my adjective was fast, then I must think of an opposite noun. So what is the opposite of fast, um, slow? What is really, really slow? A snail, fast, snail. That is my oxymoron. Two opposing words, guys, side by side. So we have four punctuation, one per paragraph. Eight language devices, two per paragraph. Very eight ambitious words. Now, the first thing we're going to do, guys, is we are going to make a note of eight basic adjectives that we always use. Guys, we are going to make a note of eight basic adjectives that we tend to always use. So let's go for sad, happy, confused, angry. Uh, let's go for, let's go for, let's go for, let's go for lazy. Let's go for, let's go for, let's go for good. Let's go for bad. And let's go for one more, guys. What is another common adjective? Let's go for, let's go for, let's go for fast. Okay, these are eight basic adjectives that people tend to use quite a lot in writing. Now, we're not ever going to use them again. We are going to use the word morose. Rather than using the word happy, we are going to use the word jubilant. Rather than use the word confused, we will use befuddled. For angry, let's go for indignant. For lazy, let's go for lackadaisical. For bad, let's go for, let's go for, let's go for abhorrent. For fast, let's go for rapid. And for good, let's go for guys. Uh, but that would mean really, really, really good. Okay, and there we have eight adjectives that we can now use to replace these eight basic words. Two per paragraph. So guys, going forward now, if you're watching this video, never ever use bad, fast, good, confused ever again. Instead, replace them with the words in red because they are ambitious words. They are better words. They are good words. They are big words. All right. One, two, three, done. Now we move on to structure. Now, there are four things, maybe five, that we're going to do for structure. Number one, in our entire essay, in our entire essay, guys, we will be using one word sentences. Guys, in our entire essay, we will be using one word sentences and we will be using them twice. Today was the best day of my life. Full stop. Amazing. Full stop. It couldn't get any better than this. So we are going to be using two one word sentences in my entire letter. Then in our letter, guys, we are going to have two one word. Sorry, sorry. Two one line paragraphs. Line paragraphs. So we have our four main paragraphs, but we're also going to have two other paragraphs that are just one line long. Now, I don't care how big your writing is, doesn't matter how small it is, but you want to have two that are just one line long because we want to get the mark for structure. And guys, the last thing that I want you all to aim for in your letter is try to use a cyclical structure. Guys, is try to use a cyclical structure. A cyclical structure, guys, is when the opening of your letter and the ending of your letter are similar. Now, this is now my advice. These are the four things that you need no matter what happens. If you want to do well in your exam, you need to use this. It's not even up for debate. But the question is, how do you use it? 
Now guys, in a, in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna plan four paragraphs for you guys, just so you can see how you use all of this stuff in a practical way. However, before I go there, I want to speak about the intro and the conclusion of our letter. Guys, the intro of your letter is a two and a half minute slot. In those two and a half minutes, all you want to do is make the purpose of your writing clear. By the end of your intro, I should know why you are writing and what you feel about this. Are you agreeing with it? Are you disagreeing with it? What is your stance? Now, my advice, guys, is start your intro in one of two ways. Start it either with a question or start it either with a fact. I repeat, guys, start it with a question or start it with a fact. It's a nice, easy way to get you going. But there's another reason why we want to start it with a fact or a question. Because we want to get the mark for a cyclical structure. So then when we do our conclusion, which is again a two and a half minute slot, the purpose of the conclusion is to summarize your key points. But when we do our conclusion, when you end your conclusion, you can write something like, let me remind you. And you can repeat the initial fact or the initial question. And that way we will get the mark for a cyclical structure. So that's what we need. We've been over the intro. We've been over the conclusion. Now, guys, let's finally put this all into an actual essay plan. And let's see how we okay. get. I am planning now my first or my four main paragraphs. Here we have paragraph one, two, three, and four. And imagine guys, I have a question, something like write a letter um, complaining about a recent uh, train journey. So let's say that's the question. The question is write a letter complaining about a recent train journey. The first thing that you should do is think of your four reasons, your four main arguments as to what this, what was so terrible about this train journey. So I may talk about firstly, I may talk about how the train was late. Then I may talk about, guys, about the condition of the train itself. Then I may talk about how the staff were very, very rude on the train. And finally, guys, I may talk about, I may talk about, I may talk about the long-term impact of this train journey, how it's left me feeling um, after a long time. So that is what my first, or that is what my four main paragraphs are about. However, one of the biggest problems in an English language exam is that students don't write enough. Their arguments aren't thorough. Their arguments aren't detailed. So for each main point, we're gonna plan two sub points. So for example, when it comes to the staff, I may talk about how they were rude in regards to the way they spoke and number three sorry and the second sub point could talk about so one could be about how rude they were and then maybe i could talk about um how they didn't know certain things so some of the questions i asked i couldn't get the answer to them for example the food and is the food uh, vegan or vegetarian? I can really kind of amp it up. But let's imagine, guys, I can do five lines there, five lines there. That's a 10-line paragraph. It's quite a solid paragraph. Always plan subpoints because your subpoints will also show you how good your initial point is. Then, guys, I'm going to talk about the condition of the trains. Oh, man, it smelled like bad, like mad in there. And I may talk about the condition of the seats how they were wearing away, there were holes in them, and so on. Then, guys, how the train was late. Now, this was terrible. This was terrible because I got late. But what did I get late for? I got late for a job interview. So this train being late, guys, is absolutely ridiculous. Next one, guys, why or how else was it late? Maybe I can talk about... Guys, maybe I can talk about um, the idea of how late it was. The idea that it wasn't five minutes late, it wasn't one minute late, but this train was super, super late. Um, and the long-term impact, guys, the long-term impact is that there has been now a loss of trust 
and the long-term impact, there has been a loss of trust in my use of public transport. I am not happy with the service and I may not be ever using public transport in regards to a train ever again. And the long-term transport, guys, is that I have also lost an opportunity. Now, what do I mean, guys? And that's the idea of a job. I'm linking it back to what I said over here, that because of you guys, I have now lost an opportunity at work. Now, at this point, my plan would be divided in half. Guys, at this point, my plan would be divided into half. Now, why would my plan be divided in half? This is the content. This is what I am going to be saying. Now we have to add the language. So what can we do, guys? So remember, we said, let me have a look, guys. We said that we are going to use the following devices. So in paragraph one, I can use, I must use a simile. I must use a hyperbole. I must use an exclamation mark. And I will use the words morose and jubilant. Guys, I will use the word morose and jubilant. That is everything that I will use in paragraph one. How I use it, where I use it is entirely up to me. But I must use a simile, hyperbole, exclamation mark, morose and jubilant. Now, you might be saying to me, oh, but sir, how can I make the word morose and jubilant fit in one paragraph? Morose means sad, jubilant means happy. Guys, they're basic adjectives. I woke up in the morning and I felt super jubilant because today was the day that I had been waiting for. Today was my job interview. However... Standing on the platform, a morose feeling began to overtake me. Your train was late, not by one minute, not by 10 minutes, but 35 minutes, exclamation mark. Guys, do you see? You have to learn to make this fit what you said at the top. Now, in paragraph two, what did I say I will be using, guys? Paragraph two, I have what's left. I can use a semicolon. Now, how do we, well, let's, let's do language devices first. For language devices, guys, let's go for a rhetorical question and facts and statistics. Stats. Then I will be using a semicolon. And a semicolon, guys, can be used to replace the word and because it can connect to clauses. And for my vocabulary, guys, I had befuddled and I had indignant. Okay, third paragraph, guys, I can use my metaphor and sibilance. Guys, third paragraph, I can use my metaphor and sibilance. And what else have I got, guys? I can use a colon, which can be used to replace the word because. And I can use, I can use lackadaisical and exceptional. Guys, I can use lackadaisical And exceptional. And finally, guys, in the last paragraph, what's left? I have personification. Oops. Yep, I have personification and oxymoron left. And I have and I have brackets that are left. And I have abhorrent and rapid. And that is my essay plan complete. Guys, that is my essay plan complete. That is a bulletproof plan, guys, of writing an essay. Don't get lost in your content. Guys, don't get lost in your content. You have to make sure your language is appropriate and supports your content. Because don't forget the mark scheme, guys. The mark scheme said language devices, punctuation, and vocabulary now there's one last little piece left in between paragraph one and paragraph two we will be putting a sentence sorry a paragraph that is one line long and in between paragraph three and paragraph four please put a paragraph that is one line long so guys a one line paragraph between these two and a one line paragraph between these two taking you no more than about 30 seconds the purpose of your one line paragraph is to get you the mark for structure and to bridge the gap between these two paragraphs. Then we need to use 
a one word sentence. Guys, then we need to use a one word sentence. So we might say, let's, let's do it guys, we have a lot of space. Maybe I can put a one word sentence in my first paragraph. And maybe I'll put a one word sentence. Let's put it in the last paragraph. And that is me done. These four paragraphs, this language with the structure, with the intro and conclusion on the either side of the letter, guys, your letter is on point. Now, at the very beginning of this video, I said to you guys that on the day of your exam, we are only planning the content, meaning this part over here. Between now and your exam, you should learn this bottom part off by heart. So you should know on the day of your exam, all right, in my paragraph one, I will use, what have I got? I will use simile hyperbole. I will use exclamation mark. I will use the word jubilant. I will use the word morose. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Learn the bottom part off by heart. So that on the day of your exam, all you're going to do is you're going to read your question and you're going to say, okay, what are the four points that I want to make? And then what do I want to say about these four points? And that is it, guys. That is how you write a letter. Because really, guys, we're not actually writing a letter. We are sitting a GCSE exam that has a mark scheme that you have to hit in your answer in every single paragraph. Guys, I promise you, if you do this, you will tick off the mark scheme just as that student did uh, when we looked at their work a little earlier. All right, guys, if you do any paragraphs, if you do any work, feel free to submit them in the comments. I will try my best to have a look at what you guys are producing and maybe give some feedback here and there. I hope you found this video beneficial. I try to put everything in one video. I think it's gone quite a, it's quite a long video. Um, but guys, I did try to give everything for writing a letter in this video. Always, it's been Mr. Everything English. As always, thank you for your support. Peace.